Welcome back, everyone, to Arise and Shine. I hope you've had a great week. I wanted to open in prayer, and then I want to share with you what I believe God has put on my heart for a word in due season for this week. Lord, we just come before you today, and we thank you for your presence, Lord God. We thank you for your love for all of us, Lord God. And we ask, Lord God, that through this message, that you will draw us all closer to you and help us to be more like you, Lord God. We thank you for your word that is the lamp unto our feet. And we ask, Lord God, that we can come before you with clean hands and a pure heart, Lord God, to seek your face as we wait on you, Lord. And we thank you for this day that you have made for each each one of us to rejoice and be glad in. And we love you and ask this in Jesus name. Amen. So I wanted to um, talk a little bit today, uh, uh, first of all, about an interesting phrase that I read this morning. <clears throat> and it goes like this. It's not happy people who are thankful. It's thankful people who are happy. Wow, that really talked to my heart. Thankful people are happy. Wow. So think about that for a minute and consider what a heart of thankfulness really does for one's spirit. So today I wanted to think on God and the things that we can be thankful for, like the instructions that God has given us to live on earth and to guide us in this world while on our way to eternity. I felt to share today on the Ten Commandments of God. These Ten Commandments reveal very important information to us. Number one, who God is, and number two, who we are. Did you know that the first four commandments deal with our relationship between God and us, while the other six deal with the relationship He has for us with each other, or human to human? We can use King David's poetic song in Psalm 15 as a measuring stick to help us understand what's got, what God's desire is for each and every one of mankind. I'm going to read that for you now out of the translation, out of the Passion Translation, sorry, and that's Psalm 15. It's entitled Living in the Shining Place. The Lord dares to dwell with you. No. Let's start that again. Lord, who dares to dwell with you? Who presumes the, no, the privilege of being close to you, living next to you in your shining place of glory? Who are those who daily dwell in the life of the Holy Spirit? They are passionate and wholehearted, always sincere and always speaking the truth. For their hearts are trustworthy. They refuse to slander or insult others. They'll never listen to gossip or rumors, nor would they ever harm another with their words. They will speak out passionately against evil and evil workers while commending the faithful ones who follow after the truth. They make firm commitments and follow through even at a great cost. They never crush others with exploitation or abuse, and they would never be bought with a bribe against the innocent. They will never be shaken. They will stand firm forever. Wow, isn't that amazing how that's translated in the Passion Translation? Wow, David spells out a tough order. It makes me think about the importance of starting my day on my knees. Can I make it until noon without making God sad because I slipped up? I want to live my life passionate about God and always sincere, never listening to gossip and following through with every commitment that I make. How about you? I am so thankful that God has given us these commands, but I'm even more thankful that his mercy and grace are new every morning, because God surely knows that I need it. How about you? Let's look at what God says in Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 20, and I'm going to read that out of the New Living Translation. In there it says, Now listen. 
Today, I am giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to keep his commandments, decrees, and regulations by walking in his ways. If you do this, you will live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you and the land that you are about to enter and occupy. But if your heart turns away and, you're, and you refuse to listen, and if you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, then I warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live a long, good life in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. Today, I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Oh, how I want my words and my heart to be pleasing to you, Lord. In Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5, God gives us his commandments. Let's take a look at, at these. So I'm going to read these today from Deuteronomy 5, but you can read them in both places. So in Deuteronomy 5, it says the commandments of the Lord are, Moses called on the people of Israel together and said, listen carefully, Israel, hear the decrees and regulations I am giving you today, so you may learn them and obey them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Mount Sinai. The Lord did not make this covenant with our ancestors, but with all of us who are alive today. At the mountain, the Lord spoke to you face to face from the heart of the fire. I stood as an intermediary between you and the Lord, for you were afraid of the fire. <coughs> Excuse me. It did not want to approach the mountain. He spoke to me. And I passed his words on to you. This is what he said. Excuse me for a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. <coughs> you must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations of those who love and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to rest, dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do work. This includes you, your servants, your daughters, your male and female servants, your oxen and donkeys, and other livestock, and any foreigners living among you. All your male and female servants must rest as you do. Remember that you were once slaves in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out with this strong hand and powerful arm. This is why the Lord your God has commanded you to rest on the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother <clears throat> as the Lord your God commanded you. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not murder. 
You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify false witness against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's wife. You must not covet your neighbor's house or land, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. The Lord spoke these words to all of you assembled there at the foot of the mountain. He spoke with a loud voice from the heart of the fire, surrounded by clouds and deep darkness. This was all he said at that time, and he wrote his words on two stone tablets and gave them to Moses. Wow. That's a lot of instruction that the Lord has given us, right? So do you think God's commandments actually have an order of importance? Do you think that has any bearing on the listing? Remember I said the first four commandments are our relationship between us and God. And the next six are the relationship that God wants us to have between each other. So... You will have no other gods before me. O oh Lord, our God, so many things these days tempt us to love things more than you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for our materialistic ways. So many worldly possessions that get in the way of our passion for you. So much stuff. And that we work ourselves so hard to get more stuff. Lord, let not our stuff invade our hearts to crowd you out. Oh, Lord, we live in a world today that says being happy should be our goal. Happy and having fun all the time, that's what life's about. Yes, being happy does matter so much. But, and it also makes us look successful. But really, Lord, this hedonism spirit is a false idol too as our happiness is from and belongs to you and only you we cannot live to create happy we need you first lord some of us have made idols out of ourselves this world has become about us me 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 what do i want what's in it for me these individualistic mindsets are not what you desire, Lord. Heal us and make us wholly yours. Sin can be tempting because our enemy tries to trip us up each day, believing it is innocent and carries no consequences. It's fun for a season, but always carries a price. Like, well, eating that whole box of chocolates in one sitting was fun, right? But then, oh no, it sure made you sick. Not to mention that it made your clothes shrink and spiked your sugar levels, which caused you to be irritable and restless with your family. Not a good idea. Oh, and then discussing your friend. Seems so innocent. You were just stating facts that were true and asking for prayer. But that conversation really did border on gossip and would not pass the love test, right? Oh, when you promised God that Sunday that you would show up and serve him by helping out at church, and then Sunday came, and because you didn't feel like it, you didn't show up. Do any of these sound familiar to you, or just to me? Oh, how often we trample on the commands of God, and how often we ignore the fact that we did. I know some commandments are much more challenging for me. How about you? Having no other gods, having no idols, do not misuse his name, obey the Sabbath, honor your father and mother, do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not testify against your neighbor, do not covet anything or anyone. I don't have an issue with a lot of them, like killing, it's not a problem. Stealing? Not a problem. Misusing God's name in vain? Not a problem. But how about you? Some of these are more of a challenge for sure. Maybe it's easy for me or tempting to have other gods. Like when I spend more time on them than on God, it becomes an idol. Many years ago, I was sick and I um, had to have surgery. And 
at that point, it was kind of critical because it was to do with my heart and I was very concerned. And I remember vividly when I was going through the uh, OR door and God told me because my biggest concern was who was going to pray for my kids. And God said to me there, um, they were a gift to you and they belong to me. And it kind of opened my eyes that day to what I had made out of my kids. I mean, I'm a mom who loves my kids and grandkids with every fiber of my being, and hopefully not more than my Lord God. But God showed me that day that it's so easy to make our loved ones our idols when they're so cute, you know, so uh, wonderful watching them grow up and, and, you know, the love of our heart just goes out to them and, and we're so well-meaning, but we have to be careful that they don't occupy our minds to overtake where God should be. And another one that maybe is a bit more tempting is, you know, to be envious of that neighbor. They have a, maybe a new house or a new car, and maybe you don't have the finances right now for either of them. Maybe it's tempted to gossip, tempting to gossip about your friend or your coworker. I guess we need to think about all those things. I'm so thankful for God's mercy. How about you? It's new every morning. In Psalm 86 and 5, it says, For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Saving grace for each one of us. What a blessing. And in Lamentations 3 and 22, it says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. I'm so thankful for this. But in light of all this mercy, we also need to be reminded that obedience to God's commands are vital to our blessing and our well-being. These commandments are not called God's suggestions for living, but his commandments. He knows what is best for us, and his heart is that we will all take these seriously, not just counting on his unconditional love and mercy to get us through. Too many are living life these days so that they will be able to just slide into heaven on their coattails, doing just enough to get by. To live this life with passion and purpose, with a real heart's desire to seek God's will and ways each and every day for his kingdom and his glory is God's heart's cry for each one of us. Let's study and remember what God says. I guess the choice is ours, right? Pastor Paul talked on Sunday um, at our church about when men go into battle in times of war, they are awarded medals for their bravery and commitment when they return home. So let me ask you, will there be medals awaiting you in heaven? for your bravery and commitment to God in this life and on this battle on earth? Will there be medals for you of obedience and commitment or passion waiting for you there? God has promised that we will live long and prosperous lives for our obedience to his word. Obedience carries blessing, prosperity, and promise. Wow. Can't get better than that, right? I love what Pastor Paul also said this past week in our teaching. It is not only possible, it is promised. Amen. Do you know that God's promises are faithful and true and from his rich love for us all? I wanted to end today with a song, and the song is by Ryan Stevenson. And that song is called No Matter What. But before I do that, I just wanted to read one more psalm. And that is Psalm 19. And that is from the New Living Translation. It says there, the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. 
The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true, each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are warning to your servant a great reward for those who obey them. How could I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Wow, isn't that an awesome promise from the Lord and an instruction? This word is the lamp unto our feet. Make sure that you read it every single day and take in what God has for you. So I wanted to end in prayer today. And then I have a YouTube video at the end that is called No Matter What by Ryan Stevenson. You will be blessed if you click on that video and listen. So, Lord, we thank you so much for your word today, Lord God. Help us, each one of us, Lord God, lead lives that will please you in every facet. Help us to resist temptation and sin, Lord God, and help us to have joy in your presence. Help us, Lord, to seek your face through your word and on our knees in prayer, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercies and your grace that are new again this day. We thank you, Lord God, that you are more than enough for anything that we could ever want or hope for. We thank you that you are there in heaven preparing a place for each one of us in eternity, Lord God. And today we want to tell you, Lord, how much we love you. We love you, Abba Father, and great I am. And we ask this, Lord Jesus, in your precious name. So the words to that song, No Matter What, by Ryan Stevenson. A lot of us grew up believing at any moment we could lose it all. At the drop of a hat, God might turn his back and move on. A lot of us feel like we blew it, thinking that we're just too far gone. But I want you to know there's still a hope for you now. No matter what you've done, you can't erase his love. Nothing can change it. You're not separated, no matter what. There's never been a better time to get honest. There's never been a better time to get clean. So come as you are, run to the cross and be free, oh be free. No matter what you've done, you can't erase his love. Nothing can change it. You're not separated no matter where you run. He's always holding on. You're still a daughter. You're still a son no matter what. I don't know what you've been taught. Don't know what you've been told. All I know is my God will never let go of you. No, I don't know what you've seen. Don't know where you what you've been through. All I know is my God will never let you go. He will never let go. He will never, never, never let you go. No matter what you've done, you can't erase his love. Nothing can change it. You're not separated. No matter where you run, he's holding on. You're still a daughter. You're still a son, no matter what. You're still a daughter. You're still a son, no matter what. So click on that YouTube at the end of this and be blessed with listening and worshiping and being drawn closer to the Lord through that um, song because it is an awesome one. Until next week, be blessed and God be with you. His protection be on you. And may he guide you to be closer to him, to walk in his commandments and to enlighten our hearts, Lord, when we um, when we mess up, Lord God, and, and to help us to know that no matter what we've done, you are always there for us and that you love us dearly. Click on the video. God bless you. Until next week.